it up, burn it up, run it up, run it up, run it up, count it up. Ayy, hundreds and fifties and twenties, no fives and no singles, don't count on them. Ayy, she want it like me, cause I blame she can't count on him. She try to be nosy and hit on my ex, she like, girl, you can count on him. Hey, hey, we need more, tell him we need more. Putting numbers on the board, let them keep a score. Hey, 16 cars in my front. That's a big number. Big numbers. Big numbers. Hundred million bag. That's a big number. Big numbers. Blue hunts. Whole team count. That's a big number. Thank you, Coach. From beautiful South Florida, there's a look at Hard Rock Stadium in Miami. The excitement brewing here in South Florida as a moment ago. The Dolphins starters were introduced to this home crowd. They're fired up as well as they get set to match up with the Baltimore Ravens. Justin Tucker set to boom this one away. And we are underway from Miami. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he'll get across the 20 before he's... Three yard line. The Dolphins take over first and ten at their own 23 yard line. Hit the right 80! Hit the mark. Night, night, sweetheart. He's coming. Double up, double up. Kill, kill. Look at that. They'll run with a second-year man from ASU, Kalen Balage. And he'll take it forward for about five up to the 28-yard line. Five yards on the game's first play, second down. Now, these two teams have met a total of 15 times starting back in 1997. And of course, remember, Baltimore was moved from Cleveland by owner Art Modell back in 1996, so they didn't have a team prior to that. But they met in 97, 15 times since then. The most recent meeting was back in 2017, a 40 to nothing route by the Ravens over the Dolphins in October of that year. Second and five now. Fitzpatrick going to look deep for... Well, this is taken in. It's complete. That one good for 37 yards. Brandon, we've both been around the game long enough that we know that in pregame, defenses are pretty amped up, aren't they? I mean, they're pounding lockers, and they can't wait to get out there. But when you hit them with some big pass plays early, it takes a starch right out of them. Check 25. Check 25. Switch, switch, switch. Switch, switch. Now Balazs. This will be a gain of about eight to the 27-yard line. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice, solid gain. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fits and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. Check 50. Check, 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 check. They run it with Balazs. 
quite the opening drive march they're on right now. It looks a lot like what we saw in practice prior to the game, doesn't it? You know, because on that last big practice beforehand, you go through your offensive script, you go through your play calling, you go through all the stuff and establish things, and it looks like it's going like clockwork right now for them. They'll run here with Belage. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. He may be playing free safety while wrapped up in a corner's body, but Earl Thomas is the best center fielder in the game. He cleans up everything back there as far as I'm concerned. I think he just has intelligence, understands things, and boy, is he tough. He's going to flip one out here to his running back, and he'll get it here to the 10-yard line. It's a gain of five, and all of a sudden here, it's third down. Let's go, defense. Let's get out the field, defense. Check, check, left. Regular, regular. Check nine, check nine. Check, 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 check. check. Collage. And this effort won't be enough as they rally up to stop him a couple of yards short. Call it a gain of three, and it'll bring up fourth down. Now, that was a big-time play by the defense. They as well knew where the first down line was, and they didn't let them get anywhere. Oh, they get to the football. It's blocked. It's picked up. A live ball here, remember. So the next time we leave one of those coaches' meetings and, and we're walking out in the hall and you're like, how come we spend so much time talking about special teams? Here you go. This is why. This is why, right? And look, I'm, I'm right there with you. We hear it every time we meet with the coaches. But it is a big part of it. Look at how early in the game this occurs. They block a kick. And not only does it set a tone, it sends a message for the rest of the game. Yeah, so much for our first points of the game. Now the Auburn product, Corey Graham. He's got a first down past the 30. And I think he's going to go. They're not going to get him. The 20. And all the way in for a Ravens touchdown. Corey Grant, 83 yards. As his guys are able to strike first here in this opening quarter. Well called, well blocked, and then he just made a great play. That was an athlete going a long way. Yeah, how about the suddenness, too, of just getting there and taking off and going for the defensive guys? Plays like that really hurt. Tucker with the extra point, and it's now a 7 nothing game. That's fielded in the end zone. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. First down Miami as they get set to start the drive. The last time they had a little bit of a special teams breakdown. That field goal was blocked. Yeah, and everything has to be precise in the kicking game. Snap, hold, kick. Obviously the blocking to keep people out. So what you really want to do is get in there and get six points and take the pressure off of those guys. When you run a screen pass really well, you got to like the look of it because so many parts come together to make it work well. The offensive linemen where they're faking people out, the back slipping out there, catching the football, then all of them going together as one unit downfield. A really nice pickup. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. Four yards the pickup, first down. Right back to him on first down. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 37-yard line. Call it a full three yards in the wrong direction there. Brings up second down. Check 20! Check 48 the mic. So we got man, man, man. Now a handoff here to his running back. Call it an eight-yard pickup, and it'll be third down. Getting the sense, Charles, they're going to put a big emphasis this afternoon on the run game. And why not? What we're seeing so far is working pretty well from them. And here's the best part. We always talk about the best performers do their job when the lights come on. I think he likes natural light best. Switch it, switch it, switch it. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he'll take this one across the 45 up to about the 46-yard line. Just a gain of two there, and it's going to bring up a fourth down. 
Well, this was just simply excellent defense. On this third down, they had to be alert for the possibility of a pass, but that didn't stop them at all from understanding what was going on when they decided to run the football, and they just swarmed and stopped them for almost no game. We'll call that a punt of 54 yards, well struck, and the Ravens will get it. First and 10 from deep in their own territory. They go to the former Saint, Mark Ingram. Ten yards there, good enough for a Raven first down. It's a game of ten. First down, Ravens. Now this will probably be the last play of the quarter. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. on first down. He's going to loft one deep left side here. And that will be incomplete. Would have been a big hitter if they had connected. Instead, it's second down. How about this offense? Already feeling good about themselves with a touchdown already in their first drive? They've certainly come out firing, even though that one was incomplete. With the 7-0 lead, more apt to take a shot like that downfield? Hey, you're one to the good. Go ahead and try and press your advantage. And not much there at all. He's up only to about the 16-yard line. Just a gain of a yard there, and now it'll be third down. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. 4C incompletion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback in the expected passing situation. Caught, and there's the first NFL catch for Marquise Brown. 20, 10, and all the way in for a Ravens touchdown. Hollywood, Marquise Brown. His first NFL reception goes for six as the Ravens push further out in front. Tucker able to connect on the extra point, and that'll make the score 14 to zip. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. The Dolphins at the line ready for their next drive. Already down two touchdowns here in the first half. This becomes a pretty important drive, doesn't it? It certainly does. And a lot of teams script plays. We know that, right? They, they have a script to start the ball game. And typically those scripts go between 12 and 24, 25 plays. Down two touchdowns early. Probably not very deep into their script. I think that they'll stay with it. I don't think they'll abandon it just yet and try and generate some offense on this drive. Anything. At least three points get that zero off the board. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. Fitzpatrick. And he fires one that's intercepted. Picked off by... Part 
of what we just saw, that's a great example of a team that was really amped up. They've been playing so well, yet they didn't get overexcited and have a bust on defense and gave up a big play. Instead, they created their own big play with a pick six. This one may be over. Yeah, it's just the first half, but that lead is swelled to the point where you're wondering if it is over already. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six, and now the kick is away. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. First down Miami as they get set to start the drive. And some dangerous territory. You're already down three scores. A three and out here or an inability to put any points up. This one might be over by half. Yeah, and what you also have to guard against is calling every play for a big shot downfield. You know, thinking you're going to get all these points back on one drive. You're not. And last time I looked, it's still the first half. I'm not saying you have ultimate patience here. But you also don't have to go ahead and force everything either. Second and six, just inside the 30. Check four, check four. You draw Porker. 34. Fitzpatrick to throw this time. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off by Patrick on Wassour. And they will be set up now as he brings this thing all the way back inside the 20. That's sort of a second quarter to forget for him. Now two picks in this frame. Almost as if the first one that he threw, he couldn't shake, couldn't get it out of his head. He ends up throwing a second one as a result. Compounds the mistake a little bit. Yeah, you got to be able to forget, compartmentalize, whatever you want to call it, and move on. He hasn't been able to do so here in the second. After the interception, here's Jackson. Polluting the... And a big loss here as he's taken down. Well, maybe that can give him a little bit of a pick-me-up, a little bit of a jolt. One of the few things has gone right defensively. Because other than that, it's really been a first half to forget. After the sack, oh, they're staring at a challenge basically from the other side of town. It's second and a country mile. Off the play fake, here's Jackson. Steps away to his left. He's got his man, it's Andrews. And he gets it all the way down inside the 10 and mark him at the five. That's good for 28 yards. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And he'll get this one back to the five-yard line, but no further than that. No gain on the play that time, and it sets up second and goal. Leads to second and goal at the five-yard line. The line of scrimmage once again the five as they get ready for second and goal. Up. He'll try and run. And he's dropped just before the line to game. Four-yard pickup leaves him with third and one. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. This situation in the fourth quarter, you go for it. But here, take the points. If you go for it here and don't get it, you and I are missing our plane, and we're going to the post-game press conference to hear him justify it. Because the next thing we'll see is the owner walking in, announcing a firing. There is no way he goes for it here. Get the field goal. It's the first half of the game. You've got time to make it up. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback.
The Dolphins at the line ready for their next drive. And we don't want to call this desperation time, especially in the second quarter, but you're down. You don't want to. No, but oh, let me finish. Okay, my bad. You're down three scores already. You've done nothing offensively, nothing on the scoreboard. That's, that's not a good combination. I think you just you called it. I think you just called it desperation time. I think <laughs> yeah. you did. But let's face it, you mentioned this to me in a break earlier in the game. The energy level hasn't been there right from the start. We've noticed that. They've got to find a way to get on their toes and start punching instead of retreating to use a boxing analogy. They'll come up now second and four from the 31. Here's a throw out wide complete to his running back right side. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. Give him 15 yards on that one, and the Dolphins have a first down. First down. First down, Jack. Mike, Yeah, let's get a sack lunch. 35. Hey, look for you. Look. On first and 10, Fitzpatrick. And he'll toss this one incomplete. Seeing no options, he throws it away. It's been my observation. There's been a nice variety of play calling defensively. You and I often talk about an offense's ability to keep a defense off balance with what they're doing. I think the converse has been true in this game. Yeah, I think you're right. They seem to have gone off tendency quite a bit, but only the second quarter. A lot of time to change things. And the Raven pressure too much. Down he goes. Three scores down, not even a halftime yet. They are not getting much generated offensively. They've got to figure it out. It's tough because this, this defense just seems to be playing with so much confidence right now. They really are. They are on their toes, and they're getting at them. So now after the sack, third and long, and Fitzpatrick and company, a little work to do. Oh, did he hang on to it? He did on the dive. Nice grab. It's a 15-yard pickup, but it'll lead to a fourth down. Well, partner, when you ask anyone other than your QB to throw the ball, you must have a lot of confidence or you think you're really going to fake them out, and it looks like they did exactly that. Yeah, going deep in the playbook and a great grab on the other end. And no move to get the offense off the field. They're going on fourth and five. Now the Dolphins going to burn the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. Here's Matt Hawk now, as he'll kick it away for the second time. Oh boy, he fielded it right on the goal line. The Raven offense set at the line for this next drive. You've got under a minute to go here until halftime. you got the good-sized lead. No need to do anything crazy. No, there really is no need to do anything crazy. The smart play, go ahead and take your lead into the locker room and then try to add to it in the second half. And that's caught inside the 30. Now the Ravens going to use one of their timeouts as they'll stop the clock with 26 seconds to go until halftime. So that changes things in a big way. Now from all the way down inside the 30, here's first and 10. They'll run on first down. It's Grant. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. The Ravens going to use the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 18 seconds to go in the first half. Eight yards the tally on that first down run. Here's second and two. And now he'll tuck it and run. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Ravens touchdown. Lamar Jack. Tucker with the extra point, and the route is on here in this first half. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback.
First down Miami as they get set to start the drive. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. Now a timeout taken. Perhaps a chance for one more quick play and then another timeout if they hurry. We'll see. One play has him up past the 40 already and another first and 10. Working out of the gun, Fitzpatrick. He gets it into the arms of Parker, complete. So we are at halftime here in the opener of the 2019 regular season as we send you up to Orlando to check in with Jonathan Coachman and our EA Sports Halftime Report. We'll see if week one fatigue becomes any kind of a factor as we are back underway in the second half. This will be fielded on the back line of the end zone. The Raven offense set at the line for this next drive. They built a good first half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spent the entire halftime just working with them on, here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half. Nice first half that we've had, guys, but be prepared for some change-ups. We're going to see them when we kick it off in the second half. See how they handle any adjustments that might be made defensively. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Mike 50, Mike 50. Come for you. Go, go. Back, back, back. To throw again. Jackson. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Give the sack to Jerome Baker. Well, there was second long. Now it's third and even longer. They're going in the wrong direction here. Because they're moving exactly the way they want to, but you're exactly right. Definitely going in the wrong direction for the offensive guys. Now after that sack, it's third and long for Jackson and the Ravens. There's Jackson on third and long. Being chased out left. He's going to run, but he's got a long way to go. And this effort will not get it done. He stopped well short of the first down at the 29. A solid run of 11 there as he tucked it and ran, but he's still short of the marker at its fourth. He gets this away. It's a good one. Drawing toward the sidelines. There, this punt will go out of bounds. I think it'll be inside the 25, and it will. Right at the 24-yard line is where they'll spot him. The Dolphins at the line ready for their next drive. They trail offense. First time to touch the ball in quarter three, and we'll see what they can do. I can't wait to see what they have planned. Because some teams script to start a half. Other teams just go, okay, these are the sequence of plays we want to run. These things worked well for us. And sometimes they throw in that big chunk play right away. <laughs> Shocker. <laughs> try and get after them early and try and create a big play to give themselves some momentum. See what they have up their sleeve. So after the run for no gain, here's second and ten. Tight as Ringo. Tight as on Ringo. Now Fitzpatrick. No, oh, he almost had it. Already with one interception, just missing his second there. I know that interception was dropped, and it would have been their third of the game, and I will guarantee you, in the huddle, on the bench, all the defensive guys have been talking about is, we've got this guy right where we want him. Who's going to get the next one? It almost becomes a challenge, and they missed a golden opportunity. And now the third down throw incomplete as well. Another drive comes and goes, still nothing on the scoreboard. Yeah, and when the second half comes, you know, it's real easy to get discouraged and wonder if you're ever going to get things started. You just got to fight through it. Got to keep pounding away. With it is Brown. That one in the books as a 64-yard punt. And the Ravens, they'll take over. The Raven offense set at the line for this next drive. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. 
Then they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you called before. <laughs> That's caught at the 25. And all the way in for a Ravens touchdown. Marquise Brown making quite a splash with his second touchdown in his NFL debut as his guys continue to pour it on. Tucker able to connect on the extra point, and that will extend this big lead. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. Fielded about a yard deep. And he's free going down the left side. It's a foot race. Touchdown, Miami. Jason Sanders now for the extra point. So they get one score back, but still a long ways to go here in this third quarter. So let's try this again. After the kick return TD, here's yet another kickoff. That's fielded in the end zone. And all that work, but he stopped where he ultimately would have been, and he's simply taken a knee, and that's the 25-yard line. The Raven offense set at the line for this next drive. And following that long touchdown pass, a one-plug drive last time. See if the deep under a heavy rush, and down he goes. Oh, free safety blitz. That can be a gamble, but it proves fruitful there. Yeah, you're exactly right about the gamble because oftentimes the free safety is the last line of defense against a long pass. And when he comes at the quarterback, he'd better get home and make the play. Otherwise, a big play could result for the offense. Second and 14 as they've got work to do here after the sack. Now a give, right side. Grant. A big one there for the Ravens. It goes for 18. Yeah, another good run there. He's been such a big part of their success here this afternoon. And that last carry, it puts him over 100 yards now for the day. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Here's Grant. And able to get a couple as he's across the 40 to the 41. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. Hey, defense, let's go. Hey, Mike Stinty, Mike Stinty. Down to lose one. Hey, go. Check, check. Here's Jackson. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. One thing that I liked about this guy during the draft process was his motor. Of course, I loved his skills, but he plays hard on every down. And that motor on full display there as he gets his first NFL sack. Now, after that sack, it's third and long for Jackson and the Ravens. Mike 50, Mike 50. Jackson now. Throwing on third and long. And able to catch it on the left sideline, but they're going to rule him out of bounds. So it'll be incomplete. And certainly one they'd like to have back as it brings up fourth down. Here's Sam Cook now as he'll punt it away for the second time. This is away and a very good kick angled for the sidelines. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. First down Miami as they get set to start the drive. And on the last go-around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means they're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. But they're 
looking for now is a little more consistency. Move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. One play has him to the 37 here for first and 10. Again, it's Belage. And this winds up a pickup of two, maybe two and a half to about the 39. They went right back to him, but he pretty much had nowhere to go on that play. Now, the previous carry looked pretty good. That one, maybe he was a little tired. I don't know. Yeah, maybe he should have tapped out and had a second back come in and maybe make that run. Who knows? The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. Fitzpatrick now. And he went nowhere. Well, he went backwards. Back to the 33. Give him a loss of six yards, and it brings up third down. The Ravens bring out an extra defensive back here on third. From the shotgun, it's Fitzpatrick. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Grant. And they'll get him down at about the 37, well short of the first. They stop him for only three that time, and that'll bring up fourth down. Here's Matt Hawk now. He's been one of their few bright spots so far. Now Brown. A big boot that time, 57 yards the official distance. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. The Raven offense set at the line for this next drive. This is sort of what you would call a put-away drive, isn't it? They score here, especially a touchdown. It's almost out of reach. It certainly feels that way, and I think that they're going to call their plays accordingly because what you really want to do, even though you know the scoreboard is still up there and the game's going to go on, in fact, you can take the spirit away from another team, that their drive and will to come back and win can be taken with another score right here. It's still third quarter, but you just get that feel. Yeah, they're teetering right there on the brink, aren't they? Back now in Miami. And this is a blowout so far as we get set for the fourth quarter. A very one-sided affair. Still a few inches short of a first down as they come up now on second down. Looking to find a lane, but he can't rein in at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the keeper, and it's going to bring up a third down. The offense on third down tonight, they've only converted once in four tries. They're looking at third and a few inches. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he picks up the first before he's taken down at the 29. They get five out of that one, and it moves the chains. Uh, he's still rumbling, isn't he? Still looking fresh in this one despite the heavy workload. But you and I both know, well-conditioned, and he did tell us that he thrives on being at his peak late in ball games. They will run with Grant. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. Bottom line, they want to keep this clock rolling, so they'll take that one right there. They just want to keep falling forward, and they want to put the onus on the big fellas up front in order to bring this one home. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. Four yards the pick up, first down. So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football in that situation. That's almost a tendency breaker. On first down, it's Grant. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. 
This drive is pretty clear. Almost feels like old school fundamentals, doesn't it? Want to impose their will on the defense. Was that five straight runs? Yeah, five straight carries to start this drive. And like you said, the way it's working, they may just stick with it. Rush in. Rush in. This is Grant. He's got the first down and more inside the 40. And he is into the end zone for a Baltimore touchdown. Corey Grant, already his second touchdown here in this opening weekend as his guys continue to put this one out of reach. Tucker now to add the point after. Now this one was over a while ago as they just add on to their big lead. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. The Dolphins at the line ready for their next drive. These guys had to punt their last possession and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm. A lot of times the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. Well, the first play of the drive lost four. Now they'll look to move it forward here on second and 14. To throw Fitzpatrick. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Pernell McPhee always a threat to find the QB, and he gets to him there. That right now, that's a defeated team out there. I think you can see it totally in their body language. Hands on hips, heads low. Uh, it's just been a struggle from the start. Yeah, this team has been thoroughly beaten right from the word go. And a very short pickup there across the 15 to the 16. Two yards on the pickup there. It's fourth down. Well, they got off the field on third down. An excellent job, an excellent defensive series. We always talk about adjustments and usually only at halftime. But the best teams adjust series to series. And on that series, they adjusted so well that they got the job done in fine style. Well, nice job on the return there, 16 yards. And that will come the offense as they take over. The Raven offense set at the line for this next drive. And this game comfortably in hand. The scoreboard speaks for itself, but you still got your starting quarterback out there. When do you go to the backup, let him get some time? And that's one of the great questions in the NFL, Brandon, because I'm just going to tell you, in the 2015 season, I commentated on three games in a row that were blowouts. And in none of them did the starting quarterback ever come out of the game for the team that had a big lead. And in each instance, I asked the coaches later on, why didn't you do that? And they all looked at me and said, just don't really do that in the NFL. We, we, you know, these guys play, and we just play them all the way through. Now, in certain situations, they, they will take them out, but for the most part, they're not as worried and concerned about getting them out of the game. And that's always puzzled me a little bit. On third down, Grant. Bit of a surprise. They ran it on third and medium. Proved to be the right call. First and ten. Do my eyes deceive me, or is he getting stronger as this game moves along? Burst seems just as good here in the fourth as it was way back in the first, doesn't it? I do believe someone put a lot of time in in the offseason and continues to condition during the season in order to continue to carry the ball at this rate. And they'll indeed take a knee. Stop here, 
So the final seconds tick away in this Baltimore victory. And partner, I must say, good to see you again. Been too long. And it's good to have football back, isn't it? Didn't you see me in preseason? Weren't we together in preseason? Yeah, but preseason, you know, it's preseason. This is week one. Oh, you're trying to say real football. Yeah, real football. Not preseason football yeah. where we shake down the rosters and figure out who's going to play and maybe the starters don't play as much. Now it's the front line guys from the first whistle. Yeah, I tuned you out in the preseason. <laughs> and now I'm listening to you. So for the Ravens, it's a fantastic start as they roll to a blowout victory here in the season opener. And they will head back home next week. Meanwhile, for the Dolphins, they obviously fall to 0-1 with the defeat. And they'll get a chance to redeem themselves at home next week. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Alongside Charles Davis, we thank our entire crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. This is the NFL on EA Sports.
took me so long getting back to my right mind. I don't wanna be on the ground when the time flies. Had so many friends go, I wonder when it's my time. I live every day like I'll die by the night time. It took me so long getting back to my right mind. Five days straight, no rest, oh well. Ow, ow, don't need no scale. I feel no money, no money, I don't need no help. Always getting money, raise no sleep. Colin. 